All right, welcome to my playthrough slash walkthrough. Um, we're at the high wall of Lothric at the starting point. Um, so yeah, I found out after taking a look at the last video, the Firelink Shrine one, that you could barely hear me. So I adjusted the microphone and tested it out, so it should be much better now. I definitely don't want to go back and redo it at this point, so I'm just going to leave it. It's just Firelink Shrine. Um, <clears throat> but this is my efficient playthrough of Dark Souls 3. Um, I said in the previous video, but I'll just reiterate. I've played through Dark Souls 3 many, many times with pretty much every main build there is. And... I feel like I've personally found the most efficient way through every area um, as I've gone through with each build twice, two or three times, getting them ready for PvP. So yeah, I'm going to be going through here with as little backtracking as possible, um, collecting every item, uh, and just trying to do it quickly. Alright, so obviously, first bonfire, nothing here. Um, two directions to go. You can go to the right and to the left. We want to start at the right, and it's a dead end. Um, the break in the wall is a guy with a crossbow. Kill him so he doesn't shoot at you when you go down there. Um, we're going to drop down to the right-hand side behind the fencing up on the ledge so the dogs can't reach you. And when they come up, you can get a free hit on them. And of course I get hit anyway. And these hollows that are just sitting here, you might as well kill them. Uh, there's a chance they can drop a Titanite Shard or a Raw Gem. And this early in the game, you want to get as much upgrade materials as you can. Yeah, there he is. So these guys both are just easily backstabbable. Dodge their first hit and backstab. Very simple. Um, up here at the top of the stairs will be a crossbowman. They'll shoot at you as soon as you come up. And then a puss of man that will transform fairly quickly. So we're going to run up, kill the crossbowman, and there is a longbow and a few arrows. We're going to kill the crossbowman, grab the cr uh, longbow, and then run to the left for cover to get away from the puss of man. It is weak to fire, and when you do initially hit it with fire, it will stun it for a moment. It's perfect for getting in some hits. Hit it twice, and run back for cover. It might follow you for just a moment, but it'll turn around and go back. And then we're going to repeat that. We should be able to kill it. Okay. Two times. And every single time, the first time you kill it, and only the first time, will it always drop a Titanite Shard and an Ember. And, and that's it for this side. So now we're going to go back and go the other direction. Uh, there's nothing down there until you open up the shortcut. I mean, there's one item, some souls that you can pick up, but eh, might as well just wait and pick it up when we come up the elevator. Mm, might as well refill your health and items. 
down here. There's a guy with a lamp walking up these stairs. As soon as he screams, everyone that can aggro will aggro and run at you. And as long as you kill him before he finishes his scream, I believe, because he was in the middle of it when we just killed him. As long as you kill him before he finishes the scream, um, everyone should just stay docile and not try and attack you. Where I've actually never started with the thief. There we go. Perfect. That should help out. And there's another guy with a lamp right here. Run over and kill him right away. Like I said, <laughs> I've never started with a thief. And I want to try it because I want to try playing the game with a dagger. I've never done that and having higher luck to see if I can get some stuff a little bit easier. But and these guys usually take two hits. So one charged R2 is all it really needs. And nothing. Up at the top of the stairs, there's one guy laying down and another one hid behind the corner. And... The guy sitting down takes a moment, so just get the guy by the corner first. And there you go. Got some binoculars here. In case you wanted to hit the high wall, do some sightseeing. Kind of like the Great Wall of China, I suppose. Although I don't think in China they actually have dragons at the Great Wall, so... Alright. And as you can see, there's a little hidden path over by the dragon right here for some... Oh, <laughs> I just missed one. Some gold pine resin. Nice. down here. And this is a great spot to leave messages for people to rate. Seems like I, whenever I leave a message here, I always get a lot of likes on it. As long as it's not some stupid like finger butthole. There's another crossbow guy coming down the stairs back there, so I'm just going to stay out of his way. Okay. As we come up here, a dragon is going to land on the back side, um, well, the front for the way we're facing right now, and breathe fire in the whole area. It will hurt you, and it will kill all the enemies in the area. So we're going to come up here and run straight back to the door and go in. Um, not going to mess with any of the enemies. A few of them will follow us into the door and we'll take care of them after that point. And then we will go back out when the fire clears to collect the items. Um, and of course the fire will still be coming. When you step back out, the dragon will breathe fire into the area again, but as long as you chug some Estus when you get a chance, it shouldn't it shouldn't kill you. Start close. Damn. And go.
that wasn't too bad. But, I mean, there's a bonfire coming right up here, so... Um, down here is a chest. It's actually a mimic. We're gonna skip over that for now. There's a uh, deep battle axe in it. And a little ways up, we'll get the, uh, the item that puts it to sleep so you can just grab it out of it and not have to worry about it. And plus, if you don't kill it here, when you get items that improve your luck, you can come back and farm for the Soul of Avarice, which is a great item that, Im that massively increases the souls that you get when you kill something, as well as increase your drop rate by, I think, a hundred? Oh, I wanna look who it is. drop anything a very easy way to fight the Lothric Knights the ones that like this with a straight sword and shield is stand a ways away from them and wait for them to run at you and as they run at you hit them before they hit you and you can just keep hitting them until you're out of stamina and then roll away get a little bit of distance and repeat So through this door here is the bonfire. And this is the only other bonfire on the high wall. And I think there's something over here. Oh great, a tie knife shard. It's perfect. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna show you a trick really quick on how to farm the Lothric Knight. Or that one, specifically. So come down here. Let him walk outside. Kill this fucking spaz. Oh, nice. And shoot the dragon. And back up. And everybody in this vicinity dies. You get some souls, and hopefully get a, something dropped. Tiny shard, maybe a Lothric knight, straight sword, and but we got nothing. Oh wait, nope. What's that? Fire bombs. I'm gonna do it one more time. It's such an easy, quick little farm at the beginning of the game. You can sit here and do this over and over again until you have enough Tainite Shards to get your weapon up to uh, plus three. And then, I don't have enough decks to actually use the bow, you know, the way you're supposed to. I don't get hardly any damage out of it, but we'll get some more decks. And then after you collect enough Tainite Shards to get a plus three weapon, we already got one large shard from the crow. We can, you can shoot the dragon over and over again until it's about a quarter of its health left, and it'll fly away, and you get a large titanite shard. And that would be two, so you could get your weapon up to plus four right at this point in the game if you wanted to. Just depends on how much time you want to spend doing this. I mean, and the arrows are dirt cheap. Before we kill the boss of the area, I'll level up the decks and we'll take out the dragon so I can show you. Eh, didn't even get anything. Alright, well let's continue on. Alright, so we're gonna go down. Mm, let's just drop on him. And there's one more. And you can go down one more time, but everything...
below here is locked. We're going to get a key to open up one part of it later in this area, so. Right up past here, a guy is going to climb up the ladder right there, and another guy on the ledge. Ugh. Knock the guy off the ledge. And you're going to run into another puss of man right up here. And again, the first time you kill it, it'll drop the ember and the tinite shard. So, I do the same thing. Except we're going to run away to the ladder and go up the ladder. people have trouble with those but as long as you know how to handle them they're not that bad fireball hit it twice run fireball hit it three times maybe four and that's it I got crystal lizard right here and the best way to deal with crystal lizards is run after them and when you're close enough hit r2 to do a jumping attack a jumping attack will always flip the crystal lizard on its back and right here, as soon as we get to the bottom of the ladder, that guy is going to shoot an arrow at us with a crossbow. Because he's just a dick like that. And climb up the ledge. And this is a shortcut to the next area, but you'll miss some pretty important stuff if you go that way. So we're skipping that right around here black fire bombs save one to trade to the crow I believe you get a titanite chunk which is very important this early in the game There's a guy hiding behind the pots here. And the Undead Hunter's Charm. That will stop uh, an enemy from healing for a certain amount of time. And will put the Mimic Chest to sleep. So you can grab an, the item that it has out of its mouth. Alright. These guys are a little bit tougher than the other knights. They tend to stab twice. And then you get a sh some time to take a shot at them. A great way to handle it is roll twice. So they stab twice and you roll twice and then get behind them and backstab them. But be careful because they'll smack you with their shield as well. Alright. So, hidden path right here, but we're going to go this way first. There's a guy hiding around the corner. Broadsword. I love the broadsword. It's really short, but it's really good. And I'm going to switch to it right now. And it's so light. Uh, still not under 50, though. All right, there's a couple of guys sitting down over here. You want to kill them before you go down there. Otherwise, they'll throw fireball, fire bombs down at you, and there's explosive barrels down there. And silver eagle kite shield. And the best way to deal with these guys is to lure them up to you. Oh, 
well, except for the damn dog. I just wanted to throw fireballs at it, but whatever. Alright, so one by one, come on up. Um, before we go down, we're actually going to head back up because there is a little, we'll take that little side path that we skipped over. Some green blossoms, one of my favorite items, I use them all the time. Store straight sword is it's it's an RA sword. It takes a, has a little bit of faith requirement to use it, but and that's it for up here. So let's see where's that guy at. That should work out or not. shard don't don't miss this get Estes shard for your flask get a firebomb ready there's a dog down here right as we come around the corner we're gonna throw the fireball at it and we get the key by the second bonfire you go down two levels well and then keep going down actually a few more levels and we'll open up the door to our buddy but we're going to continue on and open up the shortcut first. I don't even bother fighting this fucker. I've killed him multiple times. I never get much for it. Supposedly you can drop a blessed gem, which would be great this early in the game, but I've never gotten it. Damn it. We are just going to avoid him. There should be two items up here. There we go. And if you took the shortcut down that ladder I was talking about, you end up straight back there and coming around. There's nothing back there, by the way. up here, hang a right, and then we're going to jump this gap here, ring of sacrifice, definitely comes in handy sometimes, and again we want to avoid this fat fuck. the Lothric Knights and go straight across up these stairs to where another Lothric Knight is. Oh shit. Ah, I meant to two-hand it. One more. Nice. Got the Lothric Knights 
sword. The Lucerne, 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 whatever you want to call it, Lucerne. It is like my favorite underrated weapon. It is pretty good. The running attack is great. The combo with the weapon art's good. It's got good range. It's fairly quick. It's a fun weapon to use in PvP at least. All right. So we just we just went around those two guys, and we're gonna go into here. No boss fight or anything. We're gonna talk to the lady in here, so we can get a couple of items. Lothric banner to get to the next area. If it is the insignia of an old covenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I if did not do that on purpose. And the In the way of blue. And I would just equip this right away. If you get invaded, it will send somebody, a blue phantom, to help you fight the invader. And the blue phantom gets rewarded with a covenant item that is very helpful to them. They're hard to get, so equip it and help a, help a, a fellow guy out. Alright, this Lothric Knight is a little bit different than the other ones. I think he has blue eyes? He is much more powerful. And the first time you kill him, he will always drop a refined gem. Which, since we're doing a quality build, it is very useful right now. So we're going to sneak up on him and get a good couple of attacks in. And run away. Ah, shit. Ooh, that was close. Three. Refined gem. What else did he drop? Nice. Let's switch to that Lothric armor right now. What about the gloves? Yeah. Let's put it all on. Why not? That's it. Lothric Knight Sword. 18 decks. God damn. That's a lot. <laughs> Alright, so let's just run around these guys one more time. I mean, you can fight them and kill them if you want. They're just kind of a pain in the ass right now together. One on one, they're not too bad, but... I just rather avoid them and deal with them later. All right, so back up these stairs. We're gonna go open the shortcut, and go free our friend, and grab the item out of the mimic chest. More green blossoms. We're just gonna run past these guys. Since I got some throwing knives, might as well put them in there. <clears throat> yep, that's how I usually take my load. I load out. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna make sure I leave this in the up position in case for when oh, we come back. up these souls and that's pretty much everything in this whole area I mean we're pretty much ready to uh, fight the boss after we tie up some loose ends of course these goddamn dogs I hate the dogs the dogs and the rats get off of me Still alive? Jesus fucking Christ. That 
fucking crossbow guy, dude. They're not getting away. I'm gonna kill this guy since he's here. Let's see if I can get a tie knight shard from him. Alright, so we're back at the very first bonfire. We are going to warp to the second bonfire. And since we're here, might as well just do the trick with the bow. Why not? So down we go. Where's that guy? Let's see if we can get a drop on him. Oh. That door over there is locked until later, so don't even worry about that for now. When we come into here, there's explosive barrels. On the back end is a guy throwing fireballs, so run straight to the back and kill him. And then grab the item. Through the doorway to the left is another guy leaning up against the wall. One of the shittiest weapons in the game. And that's it. No more enemies right through here. And we used our key. And hey, it's our BFF. Ah. You're no jailer, are you? Nope. No, you're not a uh, bleep. Uh, I'll go. Very well, I'll do it. And that's it. Okay. Use a homer bone, and we're just gonna go straight to the shrine. And we're gonna head back. I'm gonna upgrade my weapon. Just one. And my Estus flask. I think I just have one, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna use that fire gem I got in the beginning on it. And then reinforce it. Nice, I can do it twice. Yeah. And then here's our buddy that we oh, just freed. Just... Uh, 21. That's fine. Grab a couple more of those. One of those. For an upcoming area, it's, it's a little ways away. You're going to want a weapon with a quick step, so that's why I'm buying this now. And that's always useful. And these seem to be the best arrows. Uh, out of pretty much all of them that I've used except for the great arrows. They tend to hit for the highest damage no matter what. Like anything with split damage or... I mean the feather, arrow, the feather arrows are good for long range. But for the most part, 
I get the best damage from these cheap standard arrows out of any other arrows, so I always keep quite a few of those. There we go. Goodbye, Hardy. Uh, let's see if we can get our decks leveled up to 14 so we can use the bow and kill the, uh, the, the dragon that's perched up on the wall. Alright, so one level is 16, so we need, what, 3,300? That should cover it. Welcome to speak. Very well, then take me. Ah, uh, I'm five short. Farewell, I should make. Welcome, husband. Oh, I totally forgot about the chest. We'll get that. Very well, then take me. There we go. Farewell, Ashen One. Now let's go kill that dragon and get our item out of the chest. Much better. And let's put the standard ones as R1 and the shitty wood ones as R2. Get a couple shots on it now. <clears throat> Come on. Hear the Lothric Knight coming back. Dragon sure took its time. Oh, well, there's one item that we got dropped. Yeah, that's it. Alright, there's a few different places you can stand and shoot the dragon without getting hurt. Where we were in the doorway is one of them, but there's a much better spot. And we gotta go through here. For the chest anyway so all right one mimic chest so stand right in front of it and when its teeth kind of curl inward like that you get the item if you do get the soul of avarice if you get the the headpiece from it you'll get that first and then the item that it normally has immediately after so we're gonna hit it once, put it back to its waiting position, and try one more time to see if we can get it. Ah, uh, no luck. We'll have to come back when we have better drop rate. I know I'm set up for fat rolling, but I don't really care right now. So I'm gonna run out here and get him to shoot fire to take care of these guys for me. Oh shit, maybe I shouldn't have be fat rolling. <laughs> Get an idea of where you can walk and where you can't 
We're going to go into the corner over here and shoot him in the claw right there over and over again until he leaves. I'm going to probably fast forward the video here, but just keep shooting. There he goes, and he literally just disappears. All right. So if you have the patience, then it's definitely worth it to grab a large Titanite shard. We're gonna run back up to the bonfire and warp to the first bonfire and take the shortcut down and take out the first boss. Or, yeah, it's the first boss. Gundir's the, like, the, like trial boss I guess the, the learning area boss whatever you call it and let's see so you want to go the direction of the crossbow guy and we're gonna just roll right over into here and he should take off up the stairs like a retard there he goes. And we'll take the elevator. And we're just gonna run for it. Try and keep as much health as we can before we get to the boss. To Vort. We might as well summon NPCs, why not? Um, here, let's clear his way first. I hate it when the NPCs you summon run off and just start fighting everyone. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. An easy way to deal with enemies that have shields... Well, is to do that <laughs> but if you if they have their shield up and you hit their shield and they block your attack they immediately they always once they block one attack they immediately try and attack you afterward so just spam r1 you'll hit the shield then hit them hit the shield and then hit them it's a very easy way to deal with them And if they keep blocking, you'll guard break them and then repost them, so there's not really a whole lot of downside there. Alright, we are going to stay up here until it's safe to go by the Lothric Knights. So he doesn't take off and go crazy trying to fight everybody when we're just trying to get to the boss. Come on. There we go. Keep coming. All right. And also there's one more NPC here. Our famous cliff jumper, the master swordsman or sword master, whatever. So the boss is in here. Now there's actually a second boss in the area where the woman was that we talked to over there. It is one of the late game bosses, and we're going to come back and take it on early and get access to Lothric Castle, not just the high wall, early. Um, I like to be level 35 to 45, give or take. Um, I like to have the Karthus Blood Ring before I go in there, but it all just depends on how quickly we level up. If... Uh, if I get pretty high level before we get to the point of the Karthus Blood Ring, then I'll just we'll just go and take on the uh, the dancer and go in there early 
it's always nice get there's just tons of good upgrade materials and some miracles that you don't get until later in the game when you get in there early makes makes the game much easier not that it needs to be easier I mean it's just nice having an upgraded weapon and being able to do some good damage all right so once you get close to the door it'll activate it we're going to eat a green blossom I think right now green blossom I don't think that's what they're called sword so I can't use the gold pine resin but if you can use a gold pine resin it is extremely effective here we're gonna take him head on and just roll straight damn it straight through his attacks and get behind him uh, all right here we go let's just stay behind him and then attack him Fuck it. down to half health he'll start running around and charging all crazy and you can roll into him like you've already been doing and just wait for an opening to hit him there he goes much any boss I mean like I said focus more on dodging than you do on attacking and you'll do fine it's like keep dodging their attacks and you'll quickly see when the opening is like if they have a two hit combo a three hit combo four hit combo or whatever they're gonna do you focus on dodging them and not focusing on attacking them and you will see where the openers are so you can hit them because we're not stressing about trying to get your hits in when you don't really know what's going on yet when you're just focusing on like when you see like their movements you roll you see their movement like they're going to attack and you just you just instinctively roll and you start getting those patterns down and you naturally will just see like one hit two hit like i know he's going to stop for long enough to get two or three hits in and then i just go right back to rolling very simple all right well, i'm going to stop there that is everything that we can get now out of the Lothric High Wall. Uh, I will continue on the next video to the Undead Settlement. But yeah, if you're still watching, thank you. I definitely appreciate it. I hope this is helpful to someone. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm enjoying it. I definitely need a new reason to keep playing it because I don't want to stop. So hopefully this helps someone and hopefully this is as efficient as I think. I mean, maybe someone else has found better ways than what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not literally running constantly everywhere. I'm definitely pausing to put in my thoughts and strategies in. So, all right. Again, thanks for watching. See you on the next video if you watch it.
Bye.